Okay, what I'd like to talk about today is uh, the securitization of subprime mortgages and how this worked during the period leading up to the crisis that started in 2007. What would happen is that the arranger of the securitization would take a portfolio of perhaps 1,000 subprime mortgages. And let's suppose each mortgage is, just to make life simple, each mortgage is $100,000. That means the uh, arranger has has got a portfolio that totals um, $100 million. Okay, and what the arranger of the securitization does is tranche out the risks in that portfolio. So cr creates, the arranger creates a number of tranches, each of which is responsible for a certain percentage of the potential losses on the portfolio. So. Uh, the, the tranches would be ranked in order of seniority. The most senior tranche would be rated AAA, and they, they would go down to the most junior tranche, which would uh, probably not be rated at all. And a certain amount of the principal in the underlying mortgages would be allocated to each tranche. So for example, $80 million might be allocated to the first tranche, to the most senior tranche, that is, and uh, perhaps uh, $5 million to the most junior tranche. And of course, there'd be lots of tranches in between. And then the way it all works is there's a waterfall for the interest payments and the principal payments. And the, what typically happens is those payments go first of all to the most senior tranche, then to the next most senior tranche, and so on, down to the most junior tranche. So the waterfall saying the cash flows flow from the top to the bottom. And what this means is that the losses are first of all absorbed by the most junior tranche, then by the next most junior tranche, and so on. So what do we say? The most junior tranche is five million, so that's going to absorb the first five million of losses. And then once losses exceed five million, the, um, the next most junior tranche will start to absorb losses, and so on. So what I've described so far is the first level of securitization. But it didn't stop there. What uh, the arrangers did was they had the bright idea of securitizing the tranches. So they might take a portfolio of 100 triple B tranches from different securitizations and re-securitize the risks in much the same way as I've described. So they'd be creating, creating tranches from tranches. And of course, they could go one stage further than that and create tranches from tranches from tranches. So that would create a third level of securitization. So that was how it all worked. Where did it go wrong? Where did people misjudge the risks? Well, if you look at the risks in these subprime mortgages, there's really three aspects to the risks. First of all, there's what percentage of the mortgages are going to default. Of course, we all know that that was pretty high. Um, but we've got to think about how people are thinking about things before it all happened. What percentage defaults? What would the loss given default be? And that was pretty high as well because uh, in stress market conditions, uh, the loss given default tends to be higher than uh, the loss given default in normal market conditions. And thirdly, what was what we call the default correlation between the mortgages? If, for example, <coughs> we see a high default rate in California, will that we also see a high default rate in Florida or in Texas? And so those, those are the three factors. Percentage of the mortgages that default, what will be the loss given a default on a mortgage? And thirdly, what's the default correlation between the mortgages? Now, those three factors had an effect at the first level of securitization, and that was fairly well analyzed by people. What a lot of people didn't realize was that as you move on to the second and third level of securitization, the effect gets magnified a lot. So for example, the impact of correlation at the second level of securitization is much higher than it is at the first level of securitization. Um, the uh, small increases in the uh, proportion of mortgages defaulting also has a much bigger effect at the second level of securitization than the first level of securitization. So many of those tranches that were created at the second level of securitization and certainly at the third level of securitization proved to be worthless when, uh, when the dust settles. <laughs>